I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加三鞠躬、一鞠躬、再鞠躬、三鞠躬，参加多一点传十一鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。Please be seated. Uh, and I'd like to welcome all of you、uh, here on a Sunday, the 15th of July, to、uh, another installment of our Tao Study Group. This is probably, yeah, I, I need to say this is the the high point of my week.、Uh, this is this is kind of where I start my week.、Uh, is is when we when we do the study group and the time I spend preparing for this. Uh, is is some of the the some of the richest time that I spend because I get an opportunity to immerse myself in the teachings and, and try to to come up with a way to make real life situations and the Tao teachings merge into something that's、uh, hopefully digestible and and、uh, and interesting and entertaining at the same time as well as useful and so that that thought process kind of Kind of just overwhelms my mind and uh, uh, allows me to truly focus on on the teachings and and to try and make sense of them and and try and then transmit that knowledge to you guys.、Uh, if you don't have a practice of that sort going on in your life right now,、uh, even if you don't even if you don't share here,、uh, I'd like to encourage you to to try that to set aside a little time. Uh, perhaps every day, or a couple of days a week, or whatever works for you, simply to immerse yourself in in these wonderful teachings, and, and in the the functionality and usefulness、uh, of the teachings. You know, Lao Tzu says that uh, uh, the thirty spokes go together to to create a wheel, but but it's the the hub, the hole in the center, that creates the function of a wheel, and and what that Describes to us in in short order before I get into the the real talk here, is that that while substance maybe creates the object, it is the the emptiness that creates functionality, and the two of them together、uh, produce usefulness that that's just hard to beat. Human civilization wouldn't have gotten very far if somebody hadn't come up with a wheel at some point in time. <laughs> So anyway, that said, good morning and welcome, and it is, as always, a joy to see you all here. I titled this talk "Wonderful Occurrences" because I actually wrote this talk in in real short order.、Um, this was not what I had originally planned to talk about this morning, as a matter of fact. But I, I had such an interesting night last night、uh, that I decided to make what I was going to talk about a surprise for the next couple of weeks. And uh, uh, talk about last night. So I don't I don't talk about my secular life a whole lot here,、uh, unless it unless it pertains to uh, uh, the particular lesson at hand.、Uh, this is one of those times. I am a dyed in the wool,、uh, just absolutely one hundred percent committed. A、fan of of hard rock from the '60s on. I turned 60 myself this year, and I have I have loved rock and roll music、uh, since the very first time I ever heard Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and, and I have maintained my love of music for my entire life. As it turns out, my son Aaron is has followed in my footsteps.、Uh, He and and my daughter Rebecca and even Samantha、uh, are are all musically inclined and and in the case of the older two kids have shared my love of of what we now call vintage or classic rock and roll, which just does my old black heart a ton of good. <laughs> I was、uh, standing in line with Rebecca once at a Sears store when she was about seven or eight years old. And she got bored and started humming, and the tune she was humming was "Iron Man" by Black Sabbath. <laughs> There, there's a commitment for you. 
Uh, I have also been a musician uh, since the, the late 60s, early 70s. I play guitar and bass uh, and upright bass and a couple other instruments. And and so I've, I've played my fair share of rock and roll. Been in several garage bands, a couple of local bands. Uh, love the blues. Even played around in some of the better venues here in town. But, you know, I never had that, that special quality that made it possible for me to make a living doing it. It was strictly a hobby. Yeah. Over the years, uh, Aaron has developed a wonderful friendship with the bassist for uh, one of the local metal bands here in town. He and Cole went to school with each other before either of them could play anything. And uh, Cole had a, uh, and still has a tremendous natural talent. He plays a, a gorgeous six string Ibanez bass that I actually, uh, Actually, I'm somewhat covetous of. <laughs> no, not really. But it is. It's a beautiful instrument, and he, and he plays it like he was born with it in both hands. Really, really phenomenal. And, and their band is, is musically very tight. They're really good. Uh, and I've, I've never had an opportunity to see him play until last night. Uh, Aaron's invited me several times to go with him, and I wasn't real sure that I necessarily belonged uh, at, at that particular gathering because I'm significantly older, uh, I think, than most of the people that are there, or at least that was my, my thought. But he asked me yesterday, and I, I wasn't particularly busy. There wasn't a lot going on. So I said, sure, let's let's go. I'll take you. And so we picked up one of his other friends, and I took him to go see Cole's band and, and five other bands that were playing at this uh, this little venue downtown. As I mentioned, I'm going to turn 60 this year. <laughs> Most of the attendees at this event looked like they were going to turn somewhere between 25 and 30 this year. <laughs> so as you might imagine, walking in the front door, I felt, kind of exposed. I was the token old guy in this group. Everybody there referred to me as sir. <laughs> I'm not accustomed to that. Um, I can, I, you know, when, when I think of myself in my mental image, I see myself when I was like 18, 20, 25 years old, when I still had hair and what have you. Uh, and then I look in the bathroom mirror and the conflict between my internal mental image and the reality of my situation becomes glaringly apparent. But still in my heart, I am a 20-something bass player with a, a very strong desire to, to make a living playing the blues somewhere, although that's not likely to happen at this point. Uh, it, it's still, you know, still a dream. <laughs> But the cool thing that, that that happened is that within about an hour of our arrival at, at the show, I found myself involved in, in several conversations uh, with a lot of the musicians you know, about classic rock and its influence on, on the metal genre of music, about equipment, about instruments, about sound engineering and stage presence and lighting and all of the things that go into uh, uh, to creating one of these shows. And, and although I, I have not played this particular genre of metal, I've done way more than my fair share of of, uh, of local shows and concerts and what have you, and done a lot of sound engineering work. So yeah, it's not like I'm unfamiliar with those aspects of the show, and that technology hasn't changed that much uh, over over the years. Uh, the the equipment has evolved. But the, the, the knowledge and, and experience and skills required to use the equipment are still very much the same. And that was kind of cool. The musicians and audience members there were all present because of, of their respective love of music. Not just metal, although that was, uh, what, was what was being offered up last night, but music in general, and to support their favorite local bands, you know, who were just looking for a place to go and, and play 
and have people hear their expression of themselves and to be able to share that, that wonderful music with other people. And I understand that feeling and I appreciate that feeling. And I'm, I'm really uh, very proud of and, and happy for uh, the folks that have the fortitude to get up there on the stage and, and put their hard work on display for the public uh, without any particular knowledge about how they're going to be received. It takes uh, real guts to do that. And it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of practice, and a lot of effort. And I appreciate those guys for doing it. The perception amongst us token old guys very often is that metal and the people who enjoy it uh, is usually aggressive and violent and hostile and angry. I have to confess to those of you who are significantly younger than I am, I do not understand a mosh pit. The folks that participate in that activity, I believe with all of my heart, are attempting to be critically injured by somebody they like. And, and that, that blue screens my brain. <laughs> but it is an aspect of, of this particular culture uh, that for the people that do it, I guess, is fun, entertaining, and enjoyable. So I just got out of the way. Other than my perception of the mosh pit, what I discovered was a couple hundred people in a small way under air conditioned environment in near 100% humidity, all connected to each other through music, including one token old guy, me. So what does this have to do with the, the Tao teachings? What do my musings about my, my living vicariously through my son's friend, the bassist, have to do with following the path of the Tao? What makes this useful to us? Here, here's how this is relevant. First of all, my son and I shared an evening together with his friends, enjoying some really, really good music, and then we all went out, you know, even the bands and everybody went out and got some supper and socialized at this little restaurant downtown afterwards and had a, had a really good time. I did not see any other parents there. Typically, the uh, culture of don't trust anybody over 30, <laughs> which began in the, in the 60s, uh, still pervades youth culture. But for some reason, my son and I have a relationship where I want him to be involved in the things that I do and to understand how I think and what I believe and what works for me, you know, those sorts of things. And I've discovered that he sincerely wants me to be that involved in his life, which perhaps is a bit unusual, but awfully doggone gratifying as a dad. I was accepted as part of that group, both as a musician and as a spectator. Not because I was Aaron's dad or for being Sir, the respectful name for all of us old people, but simply for being there and for having an appreciation, not just for metal, but for all music. I was grateful and really happy that Aaron wanted to include me in this aspect of his life. I got to see him in his native habitat. <laughs> the uh, American teenager socializing with his, with his circle of friends and acquaintances and, and uh, to observe those interactions and to be a part of some of them. And that was, that was such a, an enlightening experience for me that, that all I could do was sit back and smile. That's a, 
one of those things that actually actually can bring you close to tears. It's so touching. And he wanted me to, to to be involved in this aspect of his life that, quite frankly, normally is is reserved for those people who are part of the group, which definitely does not include parents. I was able to do this, to have this wonderful and miraculous event occur, because I follow the path of the Tao. Now, some of you may say that that isn't uh, necessary to have these sorts of events occur, and perhaps there's some truth to that. But I remember how I was prior to cultivating the Tao teachings in my life. And I'm not sure back then I was the kind of dad that Aaron would have wanted to have invited to this. I'm not sure I was the kind of person that, that, that the majority of these young people would have wanted to have seen there. I was uh, way too straight and way too obnoxious about it. The teachings that come into play here are the teachings of compassion and kindness. Those two teachings allow us to be open to new things, to new experiences, to new people, without contention or judging or prejudice. They allow us to live a life of gratitude and joy which is important when we're dealing with other people. When we're grateful for what's going on in our lives and what's happening around us, instead of waiting for somebody to, to, to attempt to, to, to harm or injure or slight us in some way, it alters the entire perception of the situation and allows us to make connections with others and with the situation itself so that we can have uh, a higher experience of joy and oneness and unity. And that happened so thoroughly last night that I knew as it occurred I was going to scrap my talk for this morning and talk about this. By showing kindness to others, by trying to live the teachings that I talk about here every Sunday, Aaron saw my life unfold in front of him, and I was able to pass along, even if it wasn't uh, overtly uh, intentional, the traits that I'm attempting to develop in myself. And I guess I've been uh, at least moderately successful, not perfect, but sincere, because Aaron shares those same traits now. And I watched those uh, exude from him last night and draw people around him that he didn't even know. To see that oneness occur was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. Aaron has Asperger's syndrome, and social situations are difficult for him, particularly uh, social situations with, with young ladies. He's desperately trying to sort out dating and communicating with women and trying to understand them, which I'm, I keep reminding him is a completely lost cause. I'm sure all the guys in the room will agree with me. And yet I have a picture of him in a group hug <laughs> with Cole's girlfriend and one of her friends, and he is as relaxed and calm and in control of himself in that situation as I've ever seen. This is the result of cultivating the Tao teachings. By practicing those teachings for myself, I just became another music fan 
another guy at the venue. Somebody else who loved music, enjoyed metal, and wanted to see the show. Instead of being viewed as some random parent there, uh, or some judgmental old guy waiting to throw a wet blanket on everybody else's fun. It doesn't take a lot of work to be non-contentious and non-judgmental. It does take a certain amount of awareness. I was really happy to discover that most of the people there, even the ones in the mosh pit, shared a very similar philosophy to ours, even if they weren't real sure what to call it. More than once, you know, one of the bands would get up on stage and and whoever the, the vocalist of the moment was would say, what this is all about, people, is sharing love and togetherness and oneness and peace and welcome to the show. That same same sentiment was echoed repeatedly at Woodstock and every other concert I've been I've ever been to in most of my life, and I've been to a bunch of them by bands from Led Zeppelin, to bands nobody's ever heard of before. And every now and again, it actually happens because of those teachings. We were able to make connections with other people people we didn't even know. And that feeling of oneness within that venue was spectacular. These teachings are not just esoteric, philosophical teachings on what may or may not occur in a distant universe somewhere. These teachings are meant to provide us with a way to a more joyful, peaceful, uh, thankful, and prosperous existence. And if we pay attention and practice, the most miraculous and wonderful things happen in that the teachings transform us from the inside out with virtually no effort at all. The only time we realize it's happened is when one of these events occurs and we take a moment to look backwards over time and realize how much the cultivation of the Tao teachings has changed us. Just think about that for a second. Take just a moment and look back across the karmic path of your lives, at the milestones where choices and decisions were made that caused you to go down the path of the Tao teachings and the wonderful effect that that's had. So what can I give you that's going to be useful for you today? Well, you know... (laughs) We all remember some things because of of either the negative impact they had on us or the positive impact they had on us. Uh, The negative things that happened to us, we tend to remember very clearly because they're usually painful. And our survival instinct causes us to remember the things that hurt us, so hopefully we won't do that twice. But we still hang on to the things that are positive and beautiful. I remember my wedding to Paige uh, as though it happened yesterday. One of the most positive things that's ever happened to me. One of the most beautiful events I ever saw. And to this day, I still look at her and I can see her in her wedding dress. And how radiant she was coming down that aisle with all the flowers and everything, waiting to join her life to mine definitely not negative. Last night is going to go into a spot in my memory of positive events that is on a par with my wedding because my son invited me to be a part of his life for an evening and it was beautiful and it was wonderful and the people there were great and the music was excellent. 
this little event and its sphere of influence was an amazingly positive thing. But it could have been much different if I had behaved in the stereotypical old guy fashion. When we first got there, everybody in the room was looking and waiting to see how I was going to behave because I was an anomaly in that crowd. It wasn't until they realized that I was just there to enjoy the show that everything started to move. And it was tremendous. If we can be truly open to new things and new people and look at those things with compassion and at those people with kindness and, and non-contention, then these sorts of wonderful events can happen to us every day. I realize that not every situation lends itself to, to, to this order of magnitude of positivity, but every situation has the potential for either a positive or negative outcome, and the responsibility for how that goes is ours. This is the very essence of the Taoist philosophy that we live in this positive energy in the present moment, spreading the Tao not through sermons and preaching and posturing and proselytizing, but one person at a time through the examples that we set. And at the same time, that we experience both joy and gratitude as we set that example. In other words, we do what we do. We have a prosperous, joyous life. We express gratitude for having it. And other people want that. And why shouldn't they? Rock and roll, guys. It's a wonderful thing. It's a great story. I can't tell you how proud of my son I am. And I sure hope something that I said to you this morning was useful. Thanks so much for letting me share. Let's go ahead and do the meeting ending ritual, everybody. Chili. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much.